I said, said what, what, what? In, in the, the butt. butt. I said what, what? In you got shot in the I butt. Burglar is shot in the rear end in Franklin, and police have now released body camera video you will only see right here. I guess that homeowner took it literally when they say, I'm going to shoot your ass. Now, all jokes aside, I want you to pay attention to how this guy sounded on the phone after he defended himself with this firearm in his house. Sorry, please, but police have also released a 911 call to our Ken Brown, who's live in Butler County. Well, Rob, their initial investigation says that that shooting was warranted given the circumstances, because as you'll hear in the 911 call, the victim says that he feared for his life. I fired a shot from my broken my back door. That's the call Franklin police received from this stretch of Park Avenue just before 3.30 this morning. The caller was unaware whether they had hit the person or not, and uh, he um, was clearly scared on the phone, and he did not want to get off the phone with dispatch until he actually saw an officer. You hit him. Oh, God. Oh, I'm a nervous wreck. Oh. I just happened to heard the door sliding, and I said, hey. And he turned toward me and started walking toward me like, I didn't know you was in here. I didn't know if I thought he was going to kill me. Police quickly called in a canine unit from the Monroe Police Department to help them track this man, Jeffrey Carl, to a nearby shed. The officers that were helping the track uh, recognized Jeffrey Carl as someone that had warrants. They took him into custody right away. When they looked into the shed where he was hiding, they observed blood droplets on the floor. Are you shot? Yeah. You are? Yeah, he's shot. Please confirm they also found blood in the home after the victim shot and hit Carl in the butt. A shooting their initial investigation finds justified. The, uh, the person um, actually said, I didn't know you were home and started walking towards him. Um, the homeowner, who has a weapon, um, pointed the weapon at him and fired. Carl has been booked into the Warren County Jail for burglary and failure to appear on a warrant. If you're wondering how it is that Carl was shot in the rear end, please tell me that the victim in this case is a little bit older, moves a little bit slower, so when he reached for his weapon and raised it, they believe that's when the suspect turned around and the victim fired the shot. Um, and he even says it in the audio that he's nervous. And that's the one thing I think people need to remember when it comes to defending yourself. Um, or if you ever find yourself in a situation where you have to defend yourself, you're going to be a nervous wreck. Now, there are some people out there whose veins are cold as ice. And I don't necessarily mean that in a bad way, because at the end of the day, there's nothing wrong with defending yourself when someone's trying to attack you. Um, but... For the most part, most people are going to be a nervous wreck when it comes to defending themselves, whether it be in their home or out in public if they have to use a gun to do so. Um, so don't forget that and understand that that's where the training component comes in a lot of times when we talk about getting training, not only on the safety aspect and learning how to use your firearm, but also just training overall. Because in that moment, when you get that adrenaline dump um, and you're scared out of your mind because a lot of us will be if you ever have to defend yourself. Um, you're going to want to have to revert back to it. You're going to revert back to a standard of training um, that you either have or don't have. So if you don't have much training, you're likely going to revert back to that. If you've had quite a bit of training, um, you're going to revert back to the basic standard of that training. That's a popular statement and sentiment in the gun community. And it's been that way for a long time. It'll never be perfect, but nonetheless, you have a homeowner here who utilized his ability to protect himself and he did it. <laughs> in exquisite fashion um but even on top of that i think another thing that i want to point out is like this individual was an old man so a lot of people think that i always hear the sentiment oh you know put the gun down and use your fists and fight not everybody is uh, an expert in muay thai or taekwondo or jujitsu everybody doesn't have that ability there are people out there who have uh, injuries. There are people who are old. There are women out there who are just smaller in nature. So it's not even the case necessarily that this guy wasn't a danger, so to speak, because I can see some people make an argument that, oh, this guy didn't even have a gun. So where was the lethal threat? Well, I mean, look at the size of that guy. And we're talking about an older guy. There is this thing called disparity of force where you are allowed to use lethal. You are allowed to use lethal defense to defend yourself against somebody who is considerably bigger than you or someone who is or there are multiple people trying to attack you at the same time. I think we have a 
pretty one-sided aspect of who's using firearms to defend themselves. And I think a lot of that comes from the media. The media likes to make, make it seem like the people out there defending themselves are all of these like super capable young men with firearms. And therefore they like to pre present that picture so that in your mind, you're like, well, they don't need that. They can just learn to fight. But just because he doesn't have a gun doesn't mean he's not a lethal threat. I mean, we all, we all know the FBI stats that there are more people who are beat to death, who are killed by hands and feet than they are with an AR-15. So if we understand that that is very capable and can, and can happen, it seeks to reestablish why we need to have firearms and the Second Amendment, largely for the people who are incapable of defending themselves without one. There's pretty much a castle doctrine, maybe not specifically stated as a castle doctrine in the laws, but the laws as they are stated provide a level of a castle doctrine, which means that you don't, you're not forced to retreat out of your home in order to, before you can defend yourself if someone comes into your home. We in America, we are spoiled. We are spoiled with the castle doctrine. There are a lot of places in the world that do not have a castle doctrine. You will go to jail simply for defending yourself with a firearm. And so never take that for granted because we have an ability here that most of the world does not. And that is a second amendment. So make sure you go out of your way to protect that right and continue to protect it. Because as I've always pointed out before in this particular case, yes, this man called the cops. He'd be like, well, you just call the cops, call the cops. He did call the cops. The guy was already in his house. Where were the cops? Were there any, were they anywhere to be found? He had that dispatch on the phone, but by the time the cops got there, everything had been said and done. The guy had already been shot. He was hiding in the shed. The cops came to investigate what happened. And that's a reality that I think people are not willing to accept. Cops are by and large there to investigate what happened after the fact, because we don't live in a world where cops can just instantly teleport to your location the moment something's going down. So you need to position yourself in such a way that if you actually do call the cops, understand you're going to have to wait for a while before they get there. And when I say a while, I mean, in some cases, minutes. And a minute may not sound like a long time, but like this story here, this guy had seconds to defend himself. When it comes to self-defense and the Second Amendment, the very essence of it was so that you don't have to rely on other people to defend yourself. You don't have to rely on other people to defend your country. You don't have to rely on the government not becoming tyrannical in order to protect the freedoms in this country. That's why we have the Second Amendment because they understood how important it was. And I can't think of a better example than what you just saw here. I know we are approaching the holiday seasons and I know a lot of you are gonna be doing a lot of traveling. And if you're watching this channel, chances are you're like me and you bring a gun with you whenever you do travel or fly. And I know a lot of you out there running around with these rickety, raggedy looking gun boxes that don't do much for you when it comes to actually flying with your gun. That's why. I made this Pew Pew Life Calling on the War Edition vault safe, which I actually travel with quite a bit. Actually, anytime I fly with a gun, I'm using this case. Or if you're like me and you sometimes travel with multiple guns or you just have a bigger gun and you have other accessories that you have that you wanna fly with, we have the XL version of that case as well. So you have no excuse to fly without a firearm because now you have the perfect case to do it with. It's electronic, you can put your code in there. It also has a place for you to have a key as a backup if the battery dies, and if the battery dies, there's a USB port that you can charge it, power it up instantly, and open the case. And you can fly securely, it is TSA approved. You know how frightening it is to think about what happens in the moments before, during, and even days after having to use your gun in self-defense? When you first start carrying a gun for protection, it can be a very scary and nerve wracking experience, especially if you haven't gotten the education and training you need to feel confident. I've been there myself hoping I never have to go through a self-defense shooting, which is why I'm a member of the USCCA. As a USCCA member, you can eliminate some of the stress of carrying a gun for protection by accessing the amazing wealth of firearm education, training, and current state-specific gun laws of your state or states you may travel to. This can help you be prepared for or hopefully even avoid a self-defense incident. As a bonus, members automatically become insured on the self-defense liability insurance policy purchased by an issue to the USCCA. Click below to learn more. I'm sure the YouTube algorithm is gonna do a phenomenal job of suppressing this message. So please share this video with as many people as you can so we can beat the algorithm and get our two-way message out to the masses. 
Also, don't forget to like this video and leave a comment and hit the bell and subscribe button.